omniscience and omnipotence properly understood come up. Now, reasonable question, is that enough? Uncontingent, not dependent on anything outside itself, all-knowing and all-powerful, properly understood. I think the consensus of theologians, Christian theologians over the years, and Jewish theologians before them, and the few Muslim theologians that I've read, or Muslim imams that I have listened to speak, no, that's not enough. Because you could have, hypothetically now, and of course we're talking hypothetically, you could have a being that was unlimited and non-contingent, totally powerful and totally knowledgeable, who was an absolute son of a bitch, who was cruel, some kind of super android uh, from what's the bad place in Star Trek? And that would never do. And this is where what uh, Kai Nielsen had to say really uh, rattled my cage the first time I ran into it. Long before you get to aseity, omnipotence, omniscience, properly understood, etc., the first thing that God means is worthy of worship. It's because God's worthy of worship that he can't be limited by something outside himself or herself. Because God is worthy of worship that he can't be dumb. It's because God is worthy of worship that she can't be uh, weak. But would a super powerful, super smart, super strong sadist be worthy of worship? No. Because worship means adoration, unquestioning obedience, uh, fellowship, uh, all kinds of stuff. So a third omni trait creeps in, and it's, this one doesn't have a good label for it. Uh, in my work, I refer to it as omnibenevolence. God, if there is a God, treats everyone with a just and loving hand. And what that means is God is good. 